Our guests, welcome to the 2019, 2021, and 2022 Presidential Rank Awards Ceremony for the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security and the Office of General Counsel. My name is Kyle Johnson, and it is my honor to be the Master of Ceremonies for today's award ceremony. Please rise for the arrival of the official party. Please remain standing for the presentation of the colors and the singing of our national anthem. dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Cult, port, or cult, cult, turn, march. Thank you. You may be seated. Today we are honored to gather here together to recognize the Presidential Rank Award recipients from the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security and the Office of General Counsel. Today we are joined by senior representatives from both organizations in recognition of the scale of this tremendous honor. The 2019, 2022, and 2021 Presidential Rank Award recipients from the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security and the Office of General Counsel exemplify excellence above and beyond the call of public service. It is now my privilege to introduce the Honorable Caroline D. Crass, DOD General Counsel and Director of Defense Legal Service Agency to the stage for some brief remarks. Good morning, everybody. Um, absolutely delighted to be here, and it's a real honor to have the opportunity to celebrate the momentous achievements of this extraordinarily talented group. Uh, I know that career civil servants like you uh, do not often get the chance um, to be recognized, and so this is a terrific opportunity for us to do that, and especially for those of you who work in the intel community. I know that um, you're working in secret most of the time, can't really tell your families even what you're doing, um, and so this is an even more important uh, event to recognize your contributions. I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled that uh, two of the recipients are intelligence lawyers um, and uh, that they are being honored. Um, now that's funny, the, the laughter. That was, an intend was not intended to be a laugh line. <laughs> 
Um, I believe that this uh, shows the incredibly collaborative relationship that we have between OGC and INS, and um, we're absolutely delighted that you uh, enjoy um, our uh, company as much as we enjoy yours, so thank you very much for that. Uh, Vita Antolin Jenkins and Bill Carranza, um, who are the two members of my office who are receiving uh, the Meritorious Senior Professional Award, represent the very best of what this department has to offer. And when I spoke um, in this very location uh, recently at Vita's retirement ceremony, I noted that she had devoted her entire professional career to addressing complex um, and uh, evolving, definitely evolving, uh, legal issues in the context of emerging warfighter domains. Um, and getting our legal advice right in these areas is really important uh, to the success of the department's mission to keep us all uh, safe. And I think, um, again, alluding to the classified environment in which you all work, getting it right is even more important um, than it would be because we have we don't have the public able to hold us accountable in the same way as they can do so in, in the more open uh, work that the department does. Um, I, I know that each of you um, who are receiving this, uh, these awards today has contributed in an important way um, to keeping our nation safe uh, and to our national security. And so I thank you very, very much um, on behalf of all of OGC um, for that. Um, I know that these are very dynamic and challenging times as we're seeing right now more than ever. And frankly, it's really nice to get a chance to step away from uh, a bit of the hustle and bustle of our daily routine to, to pause and to recognize the achievements that you have all uh, made. Um, I know uh, that none of us can achieve what we do on our own, um, and that um, and that you are supported, those of you receiving these awards, by uh, an important family structure. And so I want to extend my gratitude to your family members, and I'm happy to see several in the audience, unless we have some very young INS employees. Yeah, I think <laughs> I'm right in judging that, that, that some of you are uh, family members. So um, with that, I'll turn things over to uh, our MC or to, to Ron. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. And now it is my distinct, distinct honor and privilege to uh, recognize the Honorable Ronald S. Moultrie, Under Secretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security, for a few brief remarks. Yeah, Sir? Thanks, okay. Hey, good morning, everybody, and, uh, and welcome. This is a great day. Caroline Crass, Honorable Crass, thank you for those remarks, and thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Corinne Stone, glad to see you here. And all our GC friends, I, there is no contradictory between intelligence and lawyers, by the way. So, and uh, people laugh about that. It is not that. It's just that it's great to break up the family sometime and bring others in. And you are all part of the family. Um, look, it's, honor, it's an honor to be here today. Um, uh, the, uh, the does the Honorable Harris and I have been looking forward to this day for quite some time. And so we're glad to finally get on the, uh, on the calendar. The Secretary of Defense, um, as he has asked us to do before each of these ceremonies, and this is, I think, the third or fourth, fourth or fifth one that I've done, uh, he sends his congratulations to each and every one of the awardees and their families. It is really a major accomplishment receiving this. We're glad to be able to do this again after a multi-year hiatus due to COVID. You know, we have a number of years that are actually spanning here, and that's because we had this pause that we had to take during the, uh, during the pandemic. But it's great to be able to gather again today. For the family members who are here, um, let me just say thank you and uh, Take time to understand that you are here in the Pentagon, but also you're in this place called the Hall of Heroes. And for those of you who don't understand or don't really know the history of the Hall of Heroes, um, it's a room that was um, dedicated back in 1968, um, some 55 years ago. It honors the services that, uh, that we have and the various uh, awards, Medal of Honors, that are given to each of the services. There's some 3,500 names plus that are on the rolls around this wall. And these are people who have uh, demonstrated the ultimate bravery and really have shown exceptional valor by their uh, work and by all the things that they have contributed, making the ultimate sacrifice, many of them, for our nation. The people that we're going to honor here um, have also demonstrated exceptional work and exceptional public service. And we're here to thank you for that today. As Honorable Crass said, um, Behind each of you, there is a group of uh, family members, friends, colleagues, and others who have got you where you are, are today. Some of them are here today. Please join me in giving a round of applause to each of those family members who are here today. <laughs> um, 
I'd like to uh, offer my sincere congratulations to you all again. While I know that uh, you are going to enjoy this recognition, some of you have been enjoying it already for a number of years, your family members should too. For family members who are here, uh, you should know that this award comes with a small stipend. If they have not told you about that stipend, please see us, right? Because you have missed out on a major cash award. But that's just the benefit that they, uh, that they get for being here and uh, for winning an award such as this. But in all seriousness, this is a very big deal. Each year the president recognizes only a very small select group of individuals to receive this award. And the accomplishments of those who receive it exceed the highest expectations and are in keeping with the finest traditions of government service. As senior executives, we hold you to a higher level of standard and higher level of accountability than we hold anybody else. And we take great pleasure and pride in knowing that you hold yourself to those same standards. The rank award is the most prestigious and highest award that we can give. The nomination illustrates not only our thanks and confidence and trust in you, but also our department's confidence, thanks, trust, and appreciation in you. You have excelled through some of the most extraordinary times that we have had. Together, and I say together because many of us have served through these times together, you have been able to weather the COVID-19 pandemic, a 100-year pandemic. You have shown resolve and resilience through that pandemic. It did stretch us, it tested us, but it did not break us. It did not break us. Some of us lost friends, a few of us lost family members. I'm among those who lost family members during the COVID uh, uh, pandemic, but we made it through and we're stronger because of it, if you will. So thank you for all of that. Together under your stewardship, we've also done a number of other major accomplishments. These include, but are not limited only to, the Afghanistan withdrawal, the Russia-Ukraine conflict. I would also add what's going on in Israel and Hamas for some of you who are still in that row, uh, but we all are still living that today. Chinese aggression and then malign activities by Iran, North Korea, and threats that we receive from violent extremist organizations, cyber actors, and others who mean to do us harm, who are non-state actors, but you've done just outstanding. Your expertise, your leadership, your dedication uh, has enabled us to continue to maintain during these times, but also to continue to operate what I consider to be the most effective, most capable intelligence apparatus that the world has ever known. And I'll say that again, the most effective and most capable intelligence apparatus that the world has ever known. We prove that every day. We're proving it every day in the current conflict. We have proven it every day in two major conflicts around the world. And it's because of the work that you've done, the foundation that you've laid, and the, and the leadership that you have shown that allows us to continue to be able to do that work, so thank you. As a former career executive, who is now a political, but I still see myself as a career, um, I know the standards that we hold ourselves to. And I really, really know that you appreciate and care about this mission. I just want to thank each and every one of you for exceeding the expectations that we, the three of us, have set for you, but also the expectations that our department has set for you. To be on this stage and to be honored today is really extremely rare. When you look at the entire U.S. senior uh, service, and if you look at the federal government, 1% really a small percent of 1% of individuals ever become a senior executive. When you start distilling that down to the number of people who get rank awards, it's somewhere between 4 and 6% of people who are ever in the senior executive service who get rank awards. So you truly are in what I would call the rarefied air. And when you just think about the total numbers of rank awards that we have given over the last four years, we've given 144 rank awards. There's 2.1 million people serving in the federal government, 144 presidential rank awards. Great work, really great achievement, and I thank you for your service. To you, once again, I say um, our nation has, um, we, we really have uh, uh, a, a debt that we can never repay to each of you. Uh, some of you have given all uh, in terms of your health, um, your family members, the sacrifices that you've made. Um, each of you, each of you has served in such a way that um, there is no adequate uh, thank you or appreciation that we can give to you. But the least of all we can do is thank you for making our world and making uh, our nation a safer place. 
I honor you for your service. I honor you for your sacrifice. I thank you for your friendship, your camaraderie. I thank you for what you're going to continue to do if you're still in the service. I thank you for what you will do to be ambassadors for us now that some of you are out of the service. But we all appreciate your work, your sacrifice, and your dedication. And with that, please join me in giving them a major hand again. We're going to go through a, um, a ceremony here, and uh, we're going to hand out some, uh, some awards. I do believe that we have certificates. We have pins, uh, but we will not be putting those pins on individuals. Is that correct? We will hand you the pin, and that will save us some time and uh, save us a little bit of protocol, if you will. But let's get on with the ceremony. So, Kyle, we'll back over here, sir. Thanks, sir. We will now begin the presentations. I invite everyone to follow along in the program. The Civil Service Reform Act of 1978 established the Presidential Rank Awards program to recognize a select group of career members of the Senior Executive Service for exceptional performance over an extended period of time. Later, the Rank Awards statute was amended to extend eligibility to senior career employees with a sustained record of exceptional professional, technical, and or scientific achievement recognized on a national or international level. Two categories of the Presidential Rank Award are available, meritorious and distinguished. We will start with the presentation of the Meritorious Presidential Rank Awards. Recipients, when I call you to the stage after a brief description of your achievements, please come forward to achieve, uh, receive your award and take a photograph. Our Meritorious Rank recipients are recognized for sustained accomplishment. First, our 2022 Meritorious Senior Professional, Vita M. Anatolin Jenkins, OGC. Ms. Vita Anatolin Jenkins is a preeminent intelligence, international and national security and operational law senior attorney with over 32 years of experience advising senior DOD and civilian leadership. She is trusted to guide multidisciplinary teams in the development of high risk, complex clandestine and sensitive technical operations proposals expertly shaping them to maximize strategic advantage, ensuring that the highest level authorization documents for consideration by the Secretary of Defense, the National Security Advisor, and the President meet all legal requirements. As Senior Associate Deputy General Counsel for Intelligence, Ms. Anatolin Jenkins is a key advisor to the DOD General Counsel in her advice to the Secretary, Deputy Secretary, and Under Secretaries of Defense and other very senior officials on national security and intelligence law. With particular expertise in space and maritime law, clandestine operations, sensitive technical operations, sensitive reconnaissance operations, and oversight and management of special access and compartmented programs. She provides unique and invaluable expertise in oversight and legal compliance of the department's most sensitive and compartmented programs and activities, numbering in the thousands, Every DOD general counsel in the past 10 years has relied on her expertise in these matters to navigate through some of the most critical national security programs that fulfill presidential requirements. She is an expert on compliance of intelligence and clandestine activities and operations with national and international law, presidential direction, and policies. She is the lead DOD attorney for all special access programs, ensuring effective oversight and governance of all DOD SAPs, and is a key player in the Deputy Secretary's directed SAP Enterprise Reform, an advisor on effective congressional engagement on all SAP matters. Ms. Anatolin Jenkins is, a, is the lead DOD attorney in the team of DOD and interagency lawyers, working on the evolution of the national security space enterprise, including during the White House directed space strategic review. She led a DOD legal team in drafting the legislative proposals to ensure U.S. Space Force, excuse me, establish the U.S. Space Force and transform the DOD space enterprise governance documents for the President's establishment of U.S. Space Command. And as a new combat command, the Secretary's request for a delegation of space operational authorities and effective stand, effectively stand up the new Assistant Secretary of Defense for Space Policy. Please join me in welcome Ms. Vita M. 
Anatola Jenkins to the stage. We Now, our 2022 Meritorious Senior Professional, Soren K. Jones. Mr. Jones serves as the Director of Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance Operations Directorate with the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense, where he has served since June of 2021. He is responsible for providing oversight and guidance to ensure Department of Defense ISR operations meet national and department policy, priority, planning, and strategy requirements. He advises the President, the Secretary of Defense on ISR technical matters and operational employment. As Director of ISR Operations, Mr. Jones is at the forefront of innovation of, in ISR and is leader in oversight and policy in the department. Mr. Jones led the efforts to prioritize and field more than 90 ISR initiatives across nine combatant commands through $2.6 billion of the congressionally added ISR transfer funds over six years resulting in the rapid deployment of critical ISR capabilities to mitigate critical ISR gaps. Mr. Jones drove the most challenging and technical aspects of ISR operations, enabling cutting edge artificial intelligence and machine learning pathfinder activities for the defense intelligence enterprise by providing critical leadership to Project MAVEN, the Deputy Secretary of Defense directed effort to bring AI ML to the Department of Defense. He oversaw fielding AIML algorithms to 38 sites, encompassing $215 million in FY 2019, and enabled Project Maven's expansion of five lines of efforts and provided funding for 31 ISR initiatives via the ISR Transfer Fund. Please help me in welcoming Mr. Jones to the stage.
by revolutionizing the department of military intelligence, forming partnerships, by expertly leading 16 DIE organizations, the IC, and the NSC, and building lasting global partnerships focused on NDS and NSC priorities. Mr. Grimes is charged with and promotes the integration of defense intelligence enterprise by developing responsive military intelligence and information sharing relationships among the IC and its partners. He institutionalized relationships and dramatically increased the integration of DIE and IC partners while also facilitating the department's strategic engagement with foreign military and domestic partner, excuse me, foreign military and domestic partners. Mr. Grimes fundamentally revolutionized and significantly advanced the department's foreign partner engagement activities focus exclusively on the Secretary of Defense top priorities outlined in the NDS, strengthen alliances, and attract new partners. Handpicked to stand up and lead OUSD INS Commonwealth and PE program in 2016, Mr. Grimes took a nascent reactive PE effort with limited scope and began growing it into a developed, broad, robust, and lasting capability with generational impact for the department and the federal government. Please help me in welcoming Mr. Jacques Grimes to the stage. And now our 2022 Meritorious Executive, Mr. Kevin B. Sherman, OUSD INS. In his role as Director for Defense Intelligence for, Defense Intelligence, for Intelligence and Security Programs and Resources, Mr. Sherman serves as the Principal Advisor to the USD INS for all matters relating to oversight and governance of resources, programming, and requirements for intelligence, intelligence-related, and security capabilities overseeing a portfolio spanning all services, U.S. Special Operations Command, and five defense agencies. Under Mr. Sherman's leadership, the MSR Directorate successfully produced the congressionally mandated classified MIP Congressional Justification Book ahead of schedule. Production of the CJB is OUSD INS's most demanding annual product, requiring extensive, extensive coordination among all the services and agencies that execute MIP resources, the OUSD Comptroller, and the Office of Management and Budget. Comprised of nine volumes and over 1,500 pages of detailed budget justification, the MIP CJB accompanies the President's budget and justifies $23 billion of requirements for the Department's intelligence and counterintelligence activities. His unique ability to translate warfighter needs into IC priorities brought the full measure of national intelligence capabilities and resources to bear on current and future DOD strategy, resourcing, and plans. His effort to identify and synchronize Title 10 and Title 50 interdependencies will result in shared operational and tactical data requirements. He exposed the IC leadership to today's pressing intelligence gaps to address current and future threats to national security, ultimately resulting in ex executive resourcing decision. His leadership of NIP-MIP coordination efforts resulted in the Director of National Intelligence providing NIP funds for 50% of JWIC's funding shortfalls and integrating an artificial intelligence capabilities into the geospatial intelligence ground systems. Please help me in welcoming Mr. Kevin Sherman to the front stage. We'd also like to recognize those recipients unable to join us today, our 2021 Meritorious Senior Professionals, Guillermo R. Carranza 
and Frank R. Sanders OUSD INS. Congratulations to those uh, recipients. We will now recognize our distinguished rank recipients. Our distinguished rank recipients are recognized for sustained, extraordinary accomplishment. First, our distinguished senior professional, Heather McMahon, OUSD INS, receiving the 2021 Distinguished Senior Professional. Ms. McMahon's distinguished contributions as Defense Intelligence Senior Level Executive serve as the foundation of continuous improvement in the quality and fidelity of counterintelligence, security and insider threat operations, and activities conducted by the DOD components and military departments. The strategic impact of her service has propelled her through the ranks from her initial assignment as a CI advisor to the Army to her position as senior director in the President's Intelligence Advisory Board within the Executive Office of the President of the United States. On the strength of her outstanding service to the Department of Army, Ms. McMahon was hand-selected in 2017 to serve as the Director of Counterintelligence in the Office of the Secretary of Defense. Ms. McMahon was appointed by the Secretary of Defense to lead the IC lethality study to align the CI enterprise with the National Defense Strategy. She personally led the effort to write the study report and gain personal approval of the Deputy Secretary of Defense and the Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff for the five recommendations contained within. Her advocacy led to immediate approval. And threats to our nation. In 2018, Ms. McMahon collaborated with the Army to develop a data analytic platform that leveraged dozens of classified data resources. This effort greatly accelerated the background investigation process, reduced the inventory of backlogged investigations, and sparked other efforts across the U.S. government to accelerate the use of 21st technology, 21st century technology in the federal vetting enterprise. Ms. McMahon's work led to numerous advances in protecting DOD technologies from foreign intelligence services. She galvanized the contributions of multiple offices in the department to focus protection schemes of the highest priority programs and technologies leading to the publication of the department's first critical technology and programs list. This list serves today as the guidepost for these efforts. Throughout 2020, despite a global pandemic, Ms. McMahon led a PIAB examination of artificial intelligence, hosting two separate demonstrations of DOD capabilities to board members that substantially increase their understanding of how DOD applies AI to the defense mission. Her advocacy for improving IC continue to bear fruit and the board sustain interest in and pressure on the FBI to invest appropriately in the National CIA, CI Task Force. Her efforts enabled the FBI's implementation of CI task forces to combat IP threat, theft, illicit technology transfer, and malign foreign influence. Please help me in welcoming Ms. Heather McMahon to the stage. And now our distinguished executives. Mr. Robert R. Hedstrom, OSD, OUSD INS, is our 2019 distinguished executive. Mr. Hedstrom was appointed in May of 2016 as Director for Defense Intelligence for Strategy, Programs, and Resources in the Office of the Under Secretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security. In this role, he was responsible for executive oversight of the multi billion dollar portfolio of defense intelligence and security related programs and the planning, programming, budgeting, and execution of the multi-billion dollar military intelligence program capabilities critical to satisfying both current and future warfighter needs. Among his many accomplishments, Mr. Hegstrom championed $98 billion in funding reallocations from 2008 to present for DOD ISR and security enhancements, delivered key warfighting ISR priorities and capabilities, UAVs, airborne, human, space, and new technologies that helped turn the tide in Iraq 
Afghanistan, and Syria, while simultaneously leading the rebalance of ISR capabilities focused on countering near-peer adversaries. He also served as the primary interface with ODNI for crafting joint funding documents and multiple signed MOAs covering nearly $55 billion in capabilities. He was the USD, US, excuse me, OUSD INS representative to the White House-led interagency teams focused on space survivability and the remote sensing. His efforts led OUSD INS industry engagement, building coalitions to synchronize congressional and public outreach initiatives. Finally, Mr. Hedstrom spearheaded the DOD's long-term strategy shift to protect our critical space capabilities against enduring threats and denying space capabilities to adversaries who threaten U.S. national interest. He was instrumental in allocating a $10 billion increase in funding to support these nationally required space enhancements. Please help me, please join me in welcoming Mr. Robert Hedstrom to the stage. Next, our 2021 Distinguished Executive, Mr. David M. Taylor, OUSD INS. On January 20th, 2021, Mr. Ta Taylor was personally selected by the Acting Secretary of Defense and President Biden's transition team as performing the duties of Under Secretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security and performing the duties of Deputy Sec Under Secretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security. And these roles, Mr. Taylor provides leadership, guidance, and direction to the intelligence combat support agencies and the National Reconnaissance Office, Defense Counterintelligence Security Agency, and the service intelligence organizations ensuring, ensuring strong continuity of business operations and continued achievement of mission goals and prior objectives. Mr. Taylor's performance while fulfilling these roles has been critical to the continuity of operations as a stable workforce and smooth transition to presidentially appointed Senate confirmation USD INS and does the INS. Additionally, Mr. Taylor's leadership is guiding the repair of frayed relationships across the IC to ensure the new administration and the Department of Defense receives critical intelligence support. In his role as the Director of Defense Intelligence, Intelligence and Security Programs and Resources, Mr. Taylor serves as the Principal Advisor to the USD INS for all matters related to the oversight and governance of resources, programming, and requirements for intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, and security-related acquisitions, resource management, and, tech and technology-capable issues. Excuse me. Under his leadership, his team successfully managed and executed $23 billion MIT portfolio and guided the execution of the $35 billion battle space awareness and $8 billion security portfolios, ensuring the capabilities met the national security strategy and defense security strategy. Please help me in welcoming Mr. David Taylor to the stage. Please join us in another round of applause as we ask all of our award recipients to come to the center of the stage and we would like to take this moment to commemorate your achievement with a group photo. Yeah, that's 
You think you can get some? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sir, do you want to do one with and without the blacks, or or just roll like this? Uh, I think we'll go like this. Yeah, because that may be too much. We'll just. I can see. Yeah, hey, before we uh, before we get the the, uh, the word to go back and enjoy some refreshments, let me just thank once again Caroline Honorable Crass for being here, uh, Dusty Harris. Thank you, man, for being here. Uh, it really is a great day when we can get together and recognize the people who have done so much for the nation and their family members for all that they continue to do for us. I just want to make sure that all of you know that even if you were not a recipient up here today, your work is valued. We really rely on everyone. For those of you who um, helped with the ceremony, Kyle, thank you so much again. Let me give Kyle a round of applause. <laughs> and for all of our chief staff personnel, support personnel, thank you for all you do too. Um, legal, just let me thank you. Uh, you everybody should know, uh, and I say this in all seriousness now, I do not sign a package, and I believe that Dusty Harris doesn't sign a package that doesn't have a legal, legal chop on it. Everything we do is in partnership with our legal uh, colleagues, if you will, and the department operates that way. The Secretary of Defense will have Caroline in more meetings than will ha ever have me in, right? Because <laughs> if I'm in a meeting with him, that's one thing. You know, if I'm not there, he doesn't go to jail. If Carolyn's not there, then uh, you know, this department could be in trouble. So we really depend on our, um, our legal colleagues, and they do so much for us. But for all of you, just all the work that you do uh, to bring it together, we really appreciate it. For those of you who have come back, thank you so very much. Um, you all have uh, done stellar work. There's things that you're doing now in your private lives that uh, we hope you get more time for yourselves, but more importantly, that you're still able to carry the message about this department and all the great work that we do. For the family members, once again, thank you for being here today. It's, it's a pleasure and honor to have you here. Spend some time in the Pentagon. It's a place you can spend a few days in, but in the time that you're here, you know, just today, see it, enjoy it. It really is a historical place, and it's a nerve center of our nation's defense efforts. The nerve center is here. You're only a few yards from the Secretary of Defense and the leadership here. Once again, thank you for giving us some of your time. Uh, Dusty Harris, thank you, ma'am, for your leadership and all your support. And we look forward to uh, seeing you all uh, around some social time and refreshments in the back. Thank you very much, and have a great day. Okay, you Smith, please, let's go. <laughs> And so we want to give the awardees their, uh, their plaques.